Hello and welcome to another episode of Anyways, a video podcast discussion of the television series Deadwood. Today we're discussing something very expensive, the sixth episode of the second season of Deadwood. I'm Ben. Steven. Chad. And uh, uh, we're just going to go through the episode, but uh, suffice to say, some things happened this episode. <laughs> um, but it, we'll get to them, I guess. Um, it oh. starts with Al and, and Doc, mm-hmm. and uh, Doc has given Al a... Uh, uh, a look, look, see, a look over, and he says, "In the overall, sir, I call you a miracle." And then Al's eyebrow. The healing powers of obstinacy <laughs> and, ho- and, ho- and a hostile disposition. Yeah. And again, like like we've said a thousand times now, you know, comparisons to Christ is like, oh, you're a miracle. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, and, and again, but the, this show totally sucks you in. You're like, yes, it's so great that Al's body. Survived and responded and oh, I'm I'm ready for him to get back to work. Yeah, yeah. Right. I wanted that's what right. I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, God and I mean like with the absence of Al, then the the other, you know, the the power va- vacuum gets filled with Psy. Yeah. And so, ooh. Who is like a monster, but also a joke, but also yeah. a psycho. I mean, but also a cartoon character. And we'll get yeah. to it later, but something happens later in this episode that very much like uh, delineates the kind of person that Cy Tolliver is and the kind of person that Al is. We'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. But a certain way he handles the situation mm-hmm. later on, it's like Al would not have... Yeah, what would Al have done? Hated. In the same, and in that same vein, we should also... Uh, talk about the difference between that killing and like what a Dan does. Right. You know what I mean? So I, we'll I, I feel it. like it is we'll get to it. very different. It's very different. Uh, but yeah, we, we will get there uh, for sure. Okay. Holy so, Moses, fellas. So and he's ready to meet the world. Speak <laughs> of the devil, we, were, we, we have Cy and Walcott and Cy is complaining about having to, uh, to uh, dance out here in Long John's or Bay at the Moon, or he'll need to because yeah. he's trying to get people to sell their claims. And this just to explain, you know, just to explain the illogic for the, you know, the just how illogical he has been in terms of like buying up these claims when they are possibly going to be contested. Mm-hmm. And Wolcott, you can see, has this huge hunting knife that's like covering up, like, like yes. it, you know, Wolcott does not seem very physically menacing, but he, he does have like for some reason a giant knife. And he says, this phase is nearly over, even as another begins. It kind, of, it kind of feels like a, like a James Bond villain or something, yeah. where they're sitting there and talking about their, their masterful plan mm-hmm. or something, and it's like, that's the only point of this scene, is for them to say, more is to come. Yeah. Oh, look at these spiders yeah. weaving their web. Yeah. <laughs> these yeah. murderers, like creeps, in yes. a like, tiny town yeah. for money. Like, they're, 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 they're yeah. They're so they're, they're horrible. Anyway, so then we cut to Alma and Saul. We're we're getting to the good stuff, guys. We'll get there. We'll get there to oh, the it'll, it'll to the horrific violence yeah. um, that is very shocking in this episode. Look, I propose a formation of a bank. Yes, that's what. Yep. Yeah. Alma uh, and Saul uh, are Ellsworth meeting is, in Ellsworth. Yep. Yeah. And they're discussing the formation of a bank, and uh, Alma throws up, <laughs> which is the first indication, I guess, to Saul that something is up with right. Alma. And she, she wants Saul to be the chief officer or whatever mm-hmm. of the bank, the guy yeah, running right. everything, because he's good at accounting, I guess. He, he knows his numbers. And all, it's also a, uh, I guess Ellsworth has noticed stuff before with Alma, but this might be the kind of event that leads him to at least talk with Trixie. Right, in a moment. It's getting worse, basically. Yeah, and he yeah. talks about that more later. Mm-hmm. And then we, it's, so there's some cross cutting going on here. So then we go back to uh, outside where Walcott and Cy were, and a covered wagon pulls up that looks very unlike all the other wagons that have been coming into mm-hmm. town. And yeah. it's covered in like shitty fabric and like very tall. And just very strange and looking. And Mr. Lee, who is dressed like a Sergio Leone uh, cowboy, in all black and a cool hat, and he just looks awesome yeah. every time he appears. <laughs> and next to him is a man who is a very tall man. He's wearing, like, it looks like a giant blanket. Like, the covers is, he's just wearing a blanket over his shoulders, a hole in the top. Yeah. And there, he looks very rugged. Yeah, and, and he's bald, right? Yeah. yeah. He's, and then Mr. Wu, is this, 
eventually in the scene, Mr. Wu comes up and yeah, this is like right mm-hmm. here. He cuts he cuts the fucking thing open because he has a feeling mm-hmm. of what's in there, mm-hmm. and then all these He's, hands come out and it's like caged women. Yeah, it look it's like a fucking horror movie the mm-hmm. way it's shot, like with the hands coming out and like is it is the shot that it goes to Psy? And them, I, I, or does I feel it go like there? it shows all these hands, and then it rack focuses to someone in the distance, <clears throat> either Sai and Walcott or uh, Doc well, Cochran. Well, Doc Cochran, Cochran shows up. up. He yeah. does show up and looks with you know horror at this tableau of uh, uh, caged women extending their arms and pleading. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I believe the the focus pull is kind of like in the back is Walcott and Sai, and then. A little bit more in the foreground is Mr. Lee and his associate mm-hmm. kind of looking on with uh, kind of like, well, what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do about it, Mr. Wu? Yeah. 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 Um, going to go get fucking hell. And, and that <laughs> yeah. shot, gonna go that get shot is mirrored later in the episode where there's uh, different prostitutes who are smuggled in a different wagon. And you yes. see that same uh, hands oh, out. Hands yep, coming yep, yep, yeah. yep. And it, I, I would, yeah, it is very lots horror of, film. Lots of mirroring and you know, dead ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's just it's pitiful. All the women inside are silent, mute, ter- covered in like dirt, and they're scared for their lives. Yes, um, yeah. and they're th- just screaming. And then we get to uh, Al and Dan and Johnny, and they're positioning him in his chair, and uh, gets he gets gets rectified he, his posture. He's he gets just straightened up a bit because Dan's like uh, maybe a. What does he say? A cunt hair? Uh, ha- about a half a cunt hair. Yeah. Half a cunt hair. You know, so like Johnny comes and straight to the bit, and it's like you're straight as a rope, straight as a string. I think yeah. he says. And then he please he asks Johnny to give him a little ear tug if he starts drooling, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, you ain't been drooling yet. Just do it. Just fucking do it." Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's hilarious because he looks so immobile. It's like yes. he's like a yeah. piece of styrofoam. That yes, just slightly he, altered. He looks like a mannequin. Yeah, yeah. he's he's been propped up. Yeah, and it. He's concerned, as always, with how he's perceived and how that will immediately lead to his downfall. And yes. So he must be perceived as an imposing figure. Yes. Reminds me a bit of, uh, I don't know, maybe way too out of left field in terms of references, but like the scene in Gattaca where Jude Law, who is crippled, has to kind of like sit in the chair and like act like he's, you know, mm-hmm. fully bodied and, you know, just... Anyway. Yeah. That's all I have to say. <laughs> that makes sense. Anyways. Um, and then we cut to outside the room. And we everyone's see, lined up. Yeah, we see the cacophony of fucking just, just people just all lined up down the row. And, like, you don't quite see everybody at first. I feel like they keep cutting back out there. And then you see more people, and you're like, oh, so they're there, too. Mm-hmm. There's uh, Trixie, E.B. Farnham, Tom Nuttall. And at the very end is Mr. Wu There's reading Mr. a newspaper. Wu. Right. Yeah. And we know he doesn't read English. And, like, where does he get the Chinese newspaper? Is there a Chinese newspaper in Deadwood? Is, is that, that what he's got, or is he looking at his, his sheaf of papers that he oh, has? Yeah, maybe oh, he's drawing oh, pictures. He, yeah. Oh, you're right. Maybe, maybe yeah, he yeah, yeah. has his own rudimentary pictograph was, way of, in, of talking. It looked like a newspaper and how it was folded, but uh, that, that right. makes much more sense. I, that was... He did look like he was reading it is a thing. So yeah. It's kind of, I don't know. So Trixie gets Maybe he's uh, reviewing his own pictures. Yeah, you know, it's like, this is going to make Al swear. I thought it was like a Adam Sandler style sight gag. You know, like, <laughs> but Trixie gets up, forces her way to the front of the line, and Yippie's like, why the hell do I have the first chair? And she's like, do you suck his fucking prick? And mm-hmm. then everybody shuts the fuck up and yeah. she goes inside. Right. Yeah. And uh, again, that, not an exchange that I don't know if I would happen in the West, but it's awesome. It, it's, it's to the point and correct, you know, like she... Anyway, they uh, he goes and actually no. Then we skip back to uh, over to the gym. Yeah, or no, the, the Bell Union. Union. We're at the I Bell mean, Union. Yeah, and with uh, Hugo making his departure. Yeah, from Deadwood because he's not welcome, and uh, yeah. he feels it. He's uh, he compares Tolliver to Pontius Pilate. <laughs> 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 he previously used a Rubicon metaphor. In a pre- Did he really? Uh, like in I the last it. episode. Oh, oh like okay. when he's about to get thrown in the cas- in the belly union to the floor. Mm-hmm. He has all these like very highfalutin references to like Greek and Roman history. Right. And no one gets them, and no one cares. <laughs> um, he he says something that we talked about before we started rolling, which is. I mean, Sai says to Hugo Jari, sometimes the shadow's cast by the sheltering hand. Right. Which sounds biblical, which apparently is not. No. So as soon as he says, sometimes the shadow's cast by the sheltering hand, I get this befuddled look on my face, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means. And then immediately, 
They just start kind of trying to explain it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, meaning the rabble is under your control? That, what, uh, okay, so there's a hand. You, no, I understand. Like, I, I, I kind of get the metaphor, but like... I mean, I get it. I don't. I didn't. I didn't catch all of the last episode. I came in, and, you know, towards the end of the last episode, mm-hmm. so I didn't see the riotous mob coming for 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 Mister uh, Mister Hugo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, this Sci- se- Sci just lets it happen. No, yeah, because this seems to me like total puffery, total yeah. bullshit yeah. on the be- on the uh, part of Sai. The idea that he had any control whatsoever over he, the he mob. didn't rile them up to go fuck up. Uh, Hugo, uh, that no. was that was a weird byproduct of it. He was trying to get them to just shut the fuck up, right? Basically, that he's not he's not he's not that adept <laughs> at these sort of things. I, even like Al, I don't think would be able to rile up a crowd and get them to do the exact fucking thing that he wants them to do. Well, nobody can. I, well, well, Al did in the first episode. Uh, what with the half price uh, pussies half price the next fifteen minutes line. Well, but he's not rallying up oh, a crowd he's to go him, yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's that's right. a lot easier if you just say half price fucking booze and and yeah. you know. I mean, the fact that that Cy had no control over that crowd is pretty perfectly illustrated in the fact of what they did after they couldn't get Hugo. They yeah. just went for a random black guy. You know, they, it's like, oh, well, this, you know, but this the, is our target. Now. But the fact that that. Tolliver was okay, and well, I think we're we're getting into this more where we're comparing, we're getting back to comparing uh, Al and him. Right. Um, Al would have never gotten to that stage where there was a fucking riot in his bar, and then like he's okay with it yeah. and just like let shit happen. Is like Psy is so much more uh, of a chaos, uh, and he 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 breeds chaos and he sows it and is and is okay to. Let it happen, and then pick up the pieces afterwards. Mm. I kind of, I kind of agree. I feel like mainly the main thing is Al loves the gym so much. Yeah, he exactly. wouldn't want to he destroy would, it. No, no, he yeah. would burn down the whole fucking city or yeah. you know whatever. They they keep calling it a camp. Yeah, right. and it's like once you have a bank, yeah, and a sheriff, and a postal service. At one point, does it stop being camp and it becomes like a town? I feel like it wasn't a camp even at the beginning of this series, but like everybody's still kind of like thinking, like I don't know. I feel That's like how everybody's they keep downplaying it. Everybody's like still got the mindset of when like Al first set up and it was just some tents. They all want to like, still think they're pioneers. Yeah, it's it's. But they're becoming less and less of that. Oh yeah, it's getting it's getting civilized more and more by the day. Yeah, even while it gets more uncivilized in mm-hmm. certain ways. Hmm. Mm. Well, Hugo Jari in the scene says he has these wonderful lines about his his glasses have been smashed. Mm-hmm. Yes. So and then he just says this very passionate. I feel the earth washing away from me. I want to go away. And then Sai just says, "We'll fucking miss you." <laughs> and then well. Sai, of course, offers uh, Tess, who is played again by his own daughter, uh, to Hugo. Hugo refuses, and he also says. To Mr. Walcott, I find you the most severe disappointment of all. And I also, Walcott has these nice little rejoinders, and he often he says, "Often to myself as well." And he has this weird up, emphasis on "well" and mm. it drags, and it's weird. Well, well, it's, well, it's also just interesting. His his character is so fucking strange. He's like, <laughs> um, he seems very self-loathing. Yeah. Um, extremely violent. Seems to lack. Empathy, but then also can get his feelings hurt by things like Cy, this is about to happen. Oh. Sai seemingly trying to pull one over on him and blackmail him, and then thinking that Sai is like his friend, quote yeah, unquote, right. kind of. Well, he yeah. seems kind of like textbook narcissist in a way. It's like it really doesn't take much to bruise his ego. Yeah, like yeah. it. In fact, when his ego is challenged even a little bit, like the result is like. Explosive, yeah. yeah right, I, pretty I've, much. I've heard another viewer once compared him to Jack the Ripper in the Wild West. Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He uses a straight razor, sure. So he's like that, and he's kind of a gentleman. Yeah. And not that Jack, who knows whether Jack the Ripper was we a gentleman, know. but we like, don't know. I, I don't know. To me, it's like his body count. It's pretty high this episode. Yeah. Like that's, I just don't think of serial killers in the Wild West. Like, I, I mean, you know, but I don't oh, know. They I mean, happened. Oh, for sure. But, you know, violence definitely happened, and violence against women definitely happened, yeah. and I could see. A large amount of violence and covering up with that violence. So, yeah. yeah. Um, 
So how's the Jew fucking going? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so now we have Al, Al, Al and Trixie, Trixie are discussing her having sex with Saul. Right. Mm-hmm. She gives him a little bit, I suppose. I mean, I guess really all she knows. Uh, really. <laughs> she right. pretty much informs on Saul and Star. Yeah. Well, what does it add to my fucking understanding? And then it's, it's like they're, they're trying to form a bank. And mm-hmm. it's like, I mean, that's good information to know. Yeah. 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 Especially for somebody who's seemingly running everything. And uh, the wonderful uh, in, uh, details of their intimate moments. Yeah. He, he stares in my eyes when he fucks me. Longing like, and Jesus Al is just Christ. Al just totally. Like, <laughs> yeah. But it's what? a, it's some progress in their relationship that he he and she can talk about Saul. Yeah, and he's not trying yeah. to kill her. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That it was a bit of a point of contention before. I also really love his final thing in that scene where she says, "You don't look so bad." And he says, "Yeah, next thing to up and about," and it's just mm. sarcastic. He has a lot of really good sarcastic lines, and he he gains a bell which he's gotten from Johnny. <laughs> so every scene with him uh, meeting someone ends yeah. with him ringing a bell yeah. while not moving at all. Mm-hmm. It's very funny. <laughs> so this is the scene of the, I the, guess the school teacher. The school mm-hmm. marm comes yeah. into town. Um, and Merrick greets her as Merrick is want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will say that uh, Merrick is surprisingly charming yeah. in this episode. Yeah. With her. Well, here is a person of learning. Yes. You know, yeah. come to town. With a huge amount of books that she want to take twice that number. Yeah. Oh, and they, they you know, I mean, they, they connect on these, you know, little erudite, you know, sort of references. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I think that meal was f- flavored by uh, Lot's wife. And it's like, oh, you mean oh, bu- salted. <laughs> <laughs> Much like she was turned into a yeah. pillar of salt or whatever. It didn't quite go that far. But, yeah. you know, just like, oh, they catch their, you know. Yeah, and, and yeah. For, for someone who's shown to be very lonely, it's neat that Merrick has someone. Yeah. And it, things are looking great. Things are looking up for Merrick. Oh, they're looking and up for Merrick. Are. And t- two quick notes. Uh, she's played by... Uh, I forget her name, Angela Bianche, I think is her name, and she's the wife of one of the directors of a lot of these episodes, Ed Bianche. Oh. And also, this is one of the instances where the show is less interesting than history. The first uh, school teacher to arrive in Deadwood was murdered uh, Yikes. by the gun that she kept underneath her pillow because one lover got jealous. Her husband killed her lover or her lover killed her husband. One of them had come to town. There's this whole thing. Anyway, so she was shot and murdered in cold blood. Holy shit. This woman Yikes. seems a little bit less scandalous than that. Yeah. Woman. Do uh, it? Are there more than two children in this camp? Like uh, seemingly, they do. Supposedly, they do uh, show that other kid who's going who away left to Oregon. Yeah, um, right. But they didn't show him before, so I guess we could infer from that that there are other kids that just aren't. They just don't shown show them at the gym or the yeah. Bella Union, <laughs> where <laughs> where we spend all of our time, right. whorehouses and fucking bars. Yeah. Well, I mean, they do mention that. Since there aren't many other children in the camp, that even after Saul, I mean, Seth and Alma have broken up, he still says, you know, these two kids should get together because there are no, no other one, no one for them to play with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then, and then we have Trixie coming out of Al's office and suggesting that uh, E.B. Uh, sucks <laughs> uh, Al's cock. Yes. <laughs> yeah. She's just really hitting it home. Yeah. Like, I, I really like what's happened with Trixie's character because she was just kind of like quiet and right. like submissive in the beginning and just... And getting gloves, beaten up. Yes, right. and gloves have just completely come off and she doesn't give a shit. Yeah. All yeah. these people can eat her fucking asshole. She, she, more she seems so strong yes. that it's like, how is she... You know, but again, it's like, well, as always the prostitutes, it seems like some of the violence that is threatened against them is very invisible. Mm-hmm. Like, it seems like she seems so autonomous and mm-hmm. so free. Mm-hmm. And like, why doesn't she, she just flee out completely? And, and she basically says, you know, she's very big lately on these episodes about, I'm, I'm not exclusive to that guy. Yeah. I, I'm working at the hardware store now. Right. Um, Miss El- Trixie. Miss Trixie. Ellsworth comes in uh, and uh, runs into Trixie and, you know, is, has some uh, things to say to her about uh, oh, Alma's condition. Yeah. And he plays it. I, I can't quite figure out if he plays it. If he's really being coy at first, or if I don't he's think he's really being coy. No, I don't think he fucking gets it. Because yeah, I, yeah, he doesn't understand womanly matters, because, I guess. Because here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, is she saying what I think she's saying? Like, pretty much the whole way through their conversation, I was like, I don't... Really? <laughs> so, I, so I could see Ellsworth being like, 
Well, I mean, what? He's, he doesn't understand that Alma's pregnant. That's what I'm thinking. It's like, I, I kind of get him not getting Trixie saying, like, are you going to do the right thing and, like, make her an honest woman if she decides to have this baby? I don't, I can't quite figure out if he just doesn't even get the whole she's sick in the morning, she's pale. Like, if he just truly, that goes over his head. And, you know, frankly, he's a he's a gold prospector. Maybe he doesn't know that much about about the, the fairer sex in terms of, like, what happens when a woman gets pregnant or, you know, or he, or he just doesn't even, isn't making those connections in, in his head to all Yeah, that. I mean, he's been, we learn a little bit more about him later, which I won't say, but, mm-hmm. like, uh, he, he, he's been, he's been alone prospecting uh, for almost all the time we've seen him. Right. He has this folksy demeanor, yeah. but I feel like it's genuine. And then he doesn't understand, it's played as humor, he doesn't understand that she's saying, you need to marry Alma. Right, right. And she just says, do the right thing. Yeah. And he keeps... Right. Spell it out for me. Yeah, that's, that's what I like. Yeah. I, he, there was no reason to get that because, like, yeah. she was not she wasn't making being. that easy to understand <laughs> at all. Yeah. And one line that made you laugh, uh, Chad, was... Uh, the issue of my loins? Well, that, that oh, as okay. well as the, the next one, which was, so that the comes true author ain't thrown in their fucking face. <laughs> and so it's another... And then, and then, but then she starts talking about... People's faces right yeah. after that, including like children's faces yeah. and stuff too. So it's like, so it's like you, you're you're continuing this line of throwing cum in people's faces. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's, it's Shakespearean. It's very disturbing. It's but Shakespearean, also, but very vulgar. Very vulgar. And right. like more like when you read Shakespeare vulgar stuff, there's like some like old language, archaic language. But, but you the, could still get it. The cuss words here though are very modern. Right. So right. the so the comes true author ain't thrown in their fucking face, or the true author's wife face, or the face of that little fucking boy. Yeah. So throwing cum in all of their faces. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like <laughs> that's all one thought. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I mean, I guess it works for Trixie because she's that's all she deals with is yeah. sex it's all day. Yeah, exactly. So it makes total sense. But it's like I, I feel like it's also this author's obsession with sex, maybe, yes, yeah. and like having to express that through and just words. being gross and doing yeah. things like fart humor and yeah, stuff yeah, like sure. that. It was like, yeah. yeah, but it's played as it's, it's, it ends on this nice little cut where she's like, he's like, would she fucking have me? Sure, she's like, I'd work on that next. And so she's basically completely switched him to this goal. Yeah. And this ridiculous goal. Right. And he's like, oh, he's totally. And it is again like Shakespeare in that they have a plan, yeah. a marriage plot. Right. And they're just like, come <laughs> on, let's, let's, let's marry this lady. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Um, Books. Books. Yeah. So Merrick and, and, and Mary, uh, the school marm, uh, both talking about the luggage that she has, her books. Yes. And how she doesn't have all of her books because she left some in Bismarck. And Merrick's in love. Merrick yeah. is very clearly just yeah. smitten. Smitten. Yeah. I was about to use another term that was either used by Al or sign it's like that's not appropriate i understand what term you're gonna it had to involve the c word yes 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 yeah uh then next we go to uh we're too highfalutin for that here at anyway <laughs> yeah we're, um, not, we're uh, not monsters yeah uh e- evie and al are talking in his office and evie does this wonderful thing where he's getting up sitting in a chair walking away as if he's afraid he's gonna be stabbed <laughs> he's sitting back down going to near the door walking back I kept Dan appraised while you convalesced. In convalesced. It happens a lot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, it's a good, it's a good uh, euphemism for what he's been going through, I yeah. think. Like, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if next episode, if anybody asks where he's been, it's like, I mean, fucking convalescent. I mean, yeah. I don't know, but, like, that's what I would say. And it's like, you don't need to know anything else other than I was convalescing. <laughs> and what's, what's great in this Alan E.B. scene, which it's, like, back to form, mm-hmm. it's like, E.B.'s trying to hide something, not yes. very well. Not Al very well. figures it out very quickly, and then E.B. has to backtrack. But, but you know how I am. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I know. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a born well, follower, or whatever he's Yeah, saying. I'm a born follower. <laughs> <laughs> well, his, all of E.B.'s mannerisms were relaxed. He's like chewing something. Yeah. And he's like just kind of getting up. But it's like you eventually realize that he's terrified. <laughs> and then but Al offers that moment of grace again where he's yeah. just like, you looked out for yourself against the chance I'd die. Yeah, and, exactly. And then immediately Farnham pushes it too much and goes, exactly, uh, if tactically disadvantaged, exactly as before in strength. And then, <laughs> and then Al immediately rebukes him. 
and just waves a bell at him. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even understand at first. He's like, what? "Oh, was that for me?" It's the, like, "Do no. I need to come back?" Yeah, no, he means go. Get the fuck the, out of here. Does the get out of here gesture? <laughs> but I, I'm totally like seduced by E.B. Farnham's performance, and so like now I was very worried that I'm happy that he is okay after his soliloquy about how he was scared of Al. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And then we got Saul and uh, Seth. Yeah. Oh, and there, there's a little bit of contention here because uh, uh, yeah. the, their scenes aren't really as interesting as a lot of the other plot lines. Usually it's like uh, Seth's pissed off because Saul did something. And, well, and usually Seth is pissed off about something else entirely and Saul is like, hey, here's how you can make your life better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so this is kind of more of the same and he's pissed off because he thinks that he approached Alma about the bank thing even though he's trying to tell him like I didn't she yeah, asked me could, could, could I say something real quick about like uh, we've talked before about soliloquizing in terms of like Farnham or Al uh-huh. or Cy yeah. or you know any of these people who just have like essentially a sounding board and without you know that they can just sort of think out loud to someone mm-hmm. and not have much resistance whereas like Seth, Saul, Alma, they don't, they, they don't, first off, I guess they don't really need that, but they, they just don't have that. They don't get to like, you know, just sort of think out loud to someone because whoever they talk to, whoever is in their, you know, uh, trust yeah. is probably going to have something to say about what they're saying, yeah. is going to have some kind of push some kind of resistance. It's, it's reserved for the villains yeah, to, it is. to go on long monologues right. about, about how uh, they want to kill everybody right. or well, they want to... Every, everyone who's grotesque. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. Al and Farnham are larger than life, yeah. but right. Saul and Star are... Well... They got their moments. But. Bullock is, has his... But it would be too silly for them to like monologue right. for some reason. Yeah. They're, they're more realistic. I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, he has moments where stuff like that does happen, but I guess sometimes, well, there's like that weird moment where the, the letter's getting read over him walking. Sure. You know, but it's like, so it's not him. Yeah. Doing oh, yeah, that. yeah. You know You're what right. I mean? That, that was a way I mean? that they did have. That's the way they got around it. Um, and it's all in the first episode fluff. of the season. Yeah. It's what he's, you know, what he's writing to his mm-hmm. faraway wife. Right. Yeah. Former wife of his brother. Like, yeah. And I would say that Saul in this scene, he, uh, he, he's really smart. You know, uh, John mm-hmm. Ox is, like, an amazing actor. And he, his character here, as you put it, is, put, is pretty much a sounding board. And he's, like, always reassuring stuff. But in this scene, he second guesses the anger that's welling up in, in Bullock. Mm-hmm. And basically says, you know, he uses the word convalesce again. If you keep it up, we're going to fight. And you'll have to work by yourself while I convalesce. Yeah. Right. He, doesn't, he doesn't like say like, you know, oh, I mean, he understands like, if it's between you and me, I'll get my ass beat. But also, I'm, I'll do it if you're going to... And there's no shit. vanity in that. No, no yeah, there's yeah. no vanity. It's like, you know, if this keeps going, we'll have to trade some blows. I'll get hurt more than you, but, you know, like, let's just not go there. I mean, he's and, the long sufferer in that partnership. Right. And, like, then, and then instead... Bullock leaves him alone to do all the work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then kind of goes and puts a little bit of a smack down on someone else. Bullock does. I don't yeah. know. Is that maybe an extension no, of no. this? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He goes to, to the, the number 10 to the, is that what it's called? Yeah, the, the number 10. Oh, yeah. shit. Where he goes to Nuttall's. Yeah, to, and talks to Steve the drunk. <laughs> Steve. Okay. Yeah, about you know, his behavior when he tried to kill somebody yesterday. We right. made a vague reference in the last episode about Steve's surname. Yeah. Well, I tried we, we to, saw it today. On I tried cursive. to read it. His last name is it's it's not exactly a spoiler. It's just, his last name is Fields, which is the same as the man he was trying to kill. Oh, okay. Oh, so, that is kind of interesting. Yeah. That's that's very weird. I mean, there's it's not there's not more to it than that. That's in there's a. There's a bit in uh, Blood Meridian where there's like a, a white Jackson and a black Jackson amidst this group of marauders mm-hmm. and Indian scalpers. And like at one point, they're just, it, it, things between them come to a lethal head. I don't know if that's a reference to that, but that's yeah. interesting. Just kind I'd say of like a. There's a lot of Blood Meridian in this movie, you know, just grotesque yeah. violence and this masculinity which can show no love and right. must only kill. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. I do like that one of the. Uh, Credited uh, 
characters in this scene is shit stirrer. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh, the guy at the bar. Yeah. He was just like, it was just stirring shit. I while mean, smoking his, his stogie. Yeah. 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 But Jesus. in that in that scene, if you want to go ahead to that scene, like uh, Bullock is doing, as he says, and he even realizes that in a later scene with, with Saul that he, he is taking out his aggression on that guy. Yeah, of course. And there's a ridiculous punch where he punches him and he has like the softest like turn and fall. <laughs> like, a, like a fish that has been hooked onto a boat. Uh, but uh, he has a, a, a point where he says, you know, people who face business, business reverses, business, business reverses, <laughs> often feel sorry for their difficulties. And, it, and it's, a, it's a nice little thing. But anyway, let's, let's, uh, let's go to Silas and Al, if you guys right. Want to Silas and Alice, Alice and Al. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing scene. Uh, so this is have... where you find out about everything. I mean, pretty much. I mean, the rest of it's explained like a couple scenes later. But... So, so she talks a lot of smack about her uh, steward. What, what's the proper term here for what Alma is? Was for her, her Alma. For her Alma. <laughs> like saying that she was out of her mind on opiates yep. and had confided in her that she had conspired to have her husband, the late Mr. Garrett, mm -hmm. murdered. And she was tutor to her orphan ward. And Yes. And mm. that Swearingen was dropped by Alma as a possible confederate in this yeah. scheme. Yeah. She named him as her instrument. Yes. yes. Okay. Which, totally false, right? Alma was not even, she was clean of opiates by the time that right. uh, yeah. Alice, uh, whose last name I still have trouble with. Yeah, she should really be called Mrs. Isringhausen. I, I, I don't think we ever learned that her name is Alice. I don't know if this... No, no, no. They, this they, might even not be right. Who knows? No, no, no. They, they, they do in the bed, don't they? Doesn't he finally ask her what her name oh, okay. is? And she oh, says Alice. Oh, okay. I think that might be why they're calling her Alice okay. in this script. Miss Isringhausen, though, is probably, you know, it, she's referred to that mm -hmm. more often. Um, so, yeah, she, she, she talks a lot of smack about Alma. She's telling Al this. And now I'm kind of like, uh, what? what's her aim here? I'm, I'm, I'm well, blanking, actually, on this. So, it seems like... Her aim is that, like, I think she knows, she must realize that she's not convincing Al of this. Mm -hmm. That's like maybe starting, trying to start some new conspiracy to get the word out and, like, use Al to maybe have Al come out and say, like, she tried to enlist my help to do this. I told her no, mm -hmm. something like that. To where it's it's like, and it'll be fifty thousand dollars, and mm -hmm. then you can you just have to lie and say that she uh, tried to get you to well, kill her. Husband he has to produce a signed statement. Yes, so, uh, so confessing to the crime, mm -hmm. implicating Alma, and then he can leave town and just keep the the money. Is that really what she said? Yeah, that's basically what she says, as okay. far as I understand it. Wow, I didn't even. Like but it, it's designed so that they're just shout, you know, throwing off, staring each other down in these close-ups with Silas just like looking like, oh fuck, fuck, what did I do? Yeah, <laughs> but but she's like super awesome and uh, yeah. Sarah Paulson, and she's just staring him down. And just she's like, just rattling off these phrases, you know, like fifty thousand. You name her as your, you know, she, you know, you're her instrument. And uh, he, meanwhile, is uh, with his giant red eye and frozen face and features, <laughs> says, he says, you know, you're working for her, uh, her, her dead husband's family. Also, you're a fucking Pinkerton. Yeah. And we've mm -hmm. heard throughout the series about the Pinkertons. And this is the it's first Pinkerton big. that's shown up. And it's a woman. And uh, she's very formidable. And she, so now we know it's a Pinkerton. Yeah. I mean, he, he pretty much says that. He says, why I pray fervently it ain't the Pinkerton whose pay you're in, and their dead husband's people hired to steal her gold. I got unrelated reasons to hate the um, Well, is it, has it really been established yet why he hates the Pinkertons, or is it because of his murder rap in Chicago? He said that they are muscle for the boss. Well, actually, no, wait, we haven't gotten to exactly why. He, he's pretty much suggested it, but he, I don't know I if mean, he spelled it out. I think it would be obvious, though. Yeah. I mean, he's a bad dude that's lived all across the country and that's kind of like what the Pinkertons do. Right. They're yeah. they're the only people who can kind of cross state lines and like actually follow up on 
warrants and things but, like you know, that. I, yeah, I it would be like him being scared of or hate the FBI yeah, or yeah, something. Right. And it'd be like, why does he hate the well, FBI? I mean, like, because he's a fucking bad guy. <laughs> we, we mentioned Red Dead Redemption 2 all the time, which got mm -hmm. famously sued by the actual Pinkertons mm -hmm. and got dropped recently. Oh, the, the lawsuit. It, it's dropped. Fuck the Pinkertons. Fuck the Pinkertons. Yeah, yeah, the Pinkertons suck, from what I understand. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're more than, like, they're not even a law force enforcement operation. No. And, you know, I, again, I don't want to spoil his future explanations for hatred of the Pinkertons, but he, he definitely has referred to them coming in swarms. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pinkertons have an unsavory, unsavory history yeah. mm -hmm. and unsavory reputation. Mm -hmm. They're not nice people. And just because, even though they're, they were a danger to him, they're also just not cool to people who aren't now. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, And then Silas basically finally says, like, once they get outside, yeah. and it's just like, you you fucking took me for a ride. This is like, God damn it. Certainly I, not going to give me a raise. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to get that fucking promotion. And then she says, come up and fuck me. And he's like, I'd fear a snake bite. And then <laughs> she says, come up and fuck me, and I'll answer every question you want asked. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and so he goes and does it. And he's just like this kind of rumpled faced dude who just keeps getting conned. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to have sex with her again, I guess. <laughs> but I, I, at least I'll know it, what's going on. It's, it's, a, it's a little, so far, a little mm. disappointing to see where Adams has gone when his introduction was so very strong. Yeah. As being one of the first persons, one of the first people that I saw just say, fuck you to Al. Yeah. And I mean, granted, he didn't know. I mean, he knew who Al was, but like he didn't. He didn't know all the things. Yeah, but still, you just go into a man's place, and you know, you, you, you probably have an idea himself. of like what kind of a dude he is. And yeah. So, like, I don't know, seeing him sort of get. <sighs> Sorry, I just I just read where they where, when, where Seth in the next scene says business, and somebody spelt it business. They, yeah, they <laughs> because that's how he says it. He says it business. Um. Really got to like kind of the D is a little bit silent. I feel like yeah. You know, if you yeah. really like business, I think we should develop a backstory where it's like Bullock like just wants to fit in and he thinks yeah. everyone yeah. says business <laughs> and he just is like saying business like that. Um, <laughs> I'm hip. I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> but then he, let's go to Steve and I think because we haven't completely covered Steve and the shit stir in that all. Right. Um, basically, Bullock is saying again like there will be no murdering people in this camp of any color. Mm -hmm. And that's like, it's like you breathe a sigh of relief. Like the hero of this is actually not a racist. And he's not like, he's actually against lynch mobs. And so it's like, and I, I'm not, and again, I feel guilty and remiss that I haven't read a biography of actual Bullock. Mm -hmm. But I, I, what I know about Bullock doesn't always fit with the show perceives, perceives him and how progressive or modern he might be in his political views. But yeah. uh, I mean, he probably wasn't, hopefully not. Not, hopefully he was like this. So he punches uh, Steve the drunk in, in the face. Yeah, Steve gives him a little bit of lip. And, yeah, uh, and he punches yeah. him in that damn lip. Yeah, punches him right in the lip, um, leaves. And then Shitster starts basically uh, talking intellectually about law and how right. this isn't right. Is like Lady about Justice. Lady and, Justice, a totally perverted idea of Lady Justice. Of like, you know, she if she could remove that blindfold, she'd give you a wink. You know, or well, some, I mean, whatever the hell she Bullock did just here. punch. Uh, no, I mean that's totally that true. That is extrajudicial. Uh, judicial. It's not. It's not a good thing to do yeah, if you're it, the sheriff. As but, a sheriff, uh, you shouldn't. But it also him. doesn't warrant getting his horse fucked. No, no. <laughs> Which he doesn't do. He says. He didn't. Did Steve the drunk? How do we know? He no. He, he masturbates like he on but, the horse. But how do we know he didn't fuck, fuck before and then pull like and then and then couldn't quite do it's it? It's a tall horse. I think. I'm just saying. I think Steve, got an apple box maybe. Yeah. Uh, apple box jeans. I mm. believe Steve when he says that he only ejaculated on the horse's leg. But you know, um, you're gonna trust a gotta horse ejaculator. Tough. God, that's yeah. got to be tough though. Horses have like strong hind legs and they will hit you with them. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess we can debate this more uh, later on. Yeah, oh, but, we'll, oh, we'll debate it oh, once we'll, we get to the we'll actual horse fucking. We'll the, get to the it. The shit stirrer in the scene is just like talking about Lady Justice 
and then wearing him down slowly throughout the scene until finally he's like, I'm going to go fuck a horse. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go Steve fuck is going horse. off in some weird fucking direction, and the guy's just sitting there with his stogie, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's this part, the, the, he says, and if I carve fuck on the horse with a knife, yeah. I will, ha will have fucked the horse beforehand. And Shitstir says, preaching to the choir. <laughs> Like, it's like this very normal, like, relaxed drinking buddy. You don't have to tell me, brother. Yeah. <laughs> and then Nuttall says, you ought to take up whittling. Yeah. It's like, Which is pretty great. Instead yeah. of just sitting at the bar stirring shit. Uh, then we got Cy and Wolcott. Oh, God, is this the... This is, oh, this, this is, is the big, it. This is the big scene where, where uh, uh, Wolcott loses all faith in Cy. Cy, I, yeah, he did overplay his hand. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, They're exchanging I, titles for money. Yes. Right well, now. first, Sai says, as I've learned to sustain discourse while counting, I'm going to ask you to take counsel with me. And immediately raises his thumbs to his lip li and goes, and then like pulls up like different dollar bills. And supposedly he's counting while he's just staring at Wol Wolcott <laughs> talking. <laughs> it's just like such a ridiculous way just for him to be more creepy. Yes. Like he's licking his thumb and talking about like <laughs> those cribs. The, as, as far as locales for fucking, them cribs they're in lack a lure, and he licks his thumb. Yeah. Talking about the, the Chinese brothel, yeah. I guess, that is about to open with yeah. uh, Mr. Lee and the smuggled uh, Chinese women in cage. Yeah. And, uh, and then yeah. hundreds of years before, or a hundred years before it was invented, he comes up with the idea for the word passive-aggressive. He says, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's an attitude that Wallach has. He says, smart alecky sort of attitude, almost with a quality of, fucking anger to it. I, I, I don't exactly find the exact fucking words for it, but it fucking disturbs and concerns me. And so, like, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I think that's the joke. Yeah. Hmm. Um, that he can't find the words for it. Because he's exist. talking about passive aggressive. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and so anyway, he, uh, he has a line here also that he calls back to uh, Jack McCall, which mm -hmm. also played by Garrett Dolehunt, where he yeah. talks about riding one off the cliff. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But here he's talking about girls instead of cards. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, um, and Walcott is just as good as Cy in the scene because Walcott, again, it's one of these scenes where they make their eyes look really dark and they all yeah. look really serious and they're all fucking disgusting in terms of their <laughs> goals, morals, or what they're talking about. Yeah. And he's and he's he has these weird lilting up he up lilts or up tilts emphasizes his words in the last line. So he says, "By my lights, I feel I manage well." And this, the the well is always <laughs> creepy. Anyway, so. They do this little dance here in so many words it, where... It boils down to this, this, th this one line, are you my friend, Mr. Tolliver? Yeah. That's basically the whole scene. Yeah. And he proves that he's not because he tries to blackmail him yeah. with yeah. the thought of his uh, strange uh, kinks mm -hmm. yeah. that he has in the bedroom. And then well, Walcott's, Walcott's like, like, my fucking boss knows about all this shit. Yeah. He didn't fucking care. Hers. Basically, like, you think... That I'm working for like the most powerful man in America, and he doesn't know everything about me. Well, Wilcott's right. bluffing. Wilcott's bluffing. You don't you, th oh, think yeah. so? Yeah, yeah, he is. Like, uh, like he seizes on two phrases. It, Cy says, "Of course, I'm your friend," and then he he goes into friends, yeah. and then he goes into, uh, uh, you know, basically, Cy says, "I'm past surprise at habits or inclination." And so he really seizes on the phrase past surprise. Uh -huh. And uh, he has this you know, nice little thing. He basically says that, and then he, he calls out Cy for being old and past his prime. And then Cy has this little look on his face at the end of this scene after he, he basically taunts him. He says, a man like yourself, warmed in Mr. Hurst's bosom, secure in his confidence and trust, taking the time and spending the energy to pursue, persuade a relic like me. He's grateful. And he has this look as he stuffs his money in his pocket. And he's won because Walcott is leaving flustered. Uh, yeah. I, I take it, and it's definitely open to interpretation. I take it as Walcott l bluffed and and then got so angry he couldn't stay in the room. Mm. And then <laughs> and and, and Cy looks concerned, but then there's a little bit of a look where he's like, "Yeah, whatever." See, I took it. I took it to be that Cy <laughs> Cy did lose in that scene. He gets. I mean, even though Walcott leaves, he's going yeah. to take some retribution. I don't yeah. think he's like trying to like. Cover it up. Cover up anything. He tries to cover up the murders once those happen, mm -hmm. but there it's like a retribution thing because he's a fucking uh, serial killer, mm -hmm. um, and and that the way that Psy gets back on the in the upper hand is him showing up later mm -hmm. to the scene of the thing and being like, "Let me take care of this." Yeah. That's kind of how I viewed it. But yeah. uh, but I always interpreted it as as as. 
he's bluffing. But hmm. um, I also want to say, when we follow Wolcott down the street, he's mm-hmm. talking. He gives this great the, soliloquy. Well, I mean, um, like I probably should have seen what was coming with Sai and Wolcott's scene. Yeah. But it didn't really sink in what was about to happen, that some bad shit was about to happen until yeah. here comes Wolcott just walking by himself down the thoroughfare, down the and and talking to himself, which Past does not hope. happen in this show very often. Past yeah. kindness or consideration. Where someone's just talking to themselves. Past justice. Past it's, satisfaction. Past warmth or cold or comfort. Past love. But past surprise? What an endlessly unfolding tedium life would then become. No, Doris. We must not let you be past surprise. And there's a little bit more Bond villain there. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, the second he said past hope, and yeah. he's just like Jesus shaking his Christ. head. I was like, this is, oh, this is fucked. And it's like, and it's, is it like, I'm trying to remember now. Is it like profile? And it's, it's like and it's like. I think it starts. Kind of, it starts out. He's walking towards us, yeah. and yes. then it, it moves, and he's and it's like really close on him as he finishes. And his then, walk. but it's like it's like dollying with him too, yes. right? Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Eventually, you just it's, have horses and buggies on all it, sides, but just his face. It's very yeah. intense because yeah. of that. Yeah. Is, yeah. And there's a small detail here which has never been confirmed, but I, it's my personal conspiracy theory, which has no. There's a man who looks like Jim Beaver, and he's wearing like he has a butcher's. There's like a hog behind him that's been sliced in half, and he has a butcher's thing, and he has like a weird, like one of the bounty hunters in Empire Strikes Back who has that weird <laughs> Dengar. Dengar. Yeah, Dengar has that, that bandage <laughs> hat. Yeah, yeah. And there's a guy doing that, and he's and he, he looks just like Jim Baver who plays Ellsworth, but he's like he you know he would some people have said Ben you're a fool. He would have. But he, I, I, looked at, I looked at it today on our. Lar- we have a large projection screen. Yeah. And it, it still looks like him. Maybe they add like a tiny perspective to his face, but it, it looks like Jim Beaver playing a dual role. And at the same time, walking on the street is a hoople head With that a has beaver. a beaver, yes, a dead I, beaver in I their hands. And it's just like, and I was, th- I'm thinking like maybe they're like playing on like doubling Ellsworth while they're doubling Garrett Dillahunt also. Hmm. But also, this is also kind of ridiculous. And they come from. I, I tweeted. Um, uh, Jim Beaver, who plays Ellsworth, and yeah. he did not respond. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the guy was carrying the the beaver by the tail, the yeah. dead beaver. Cause right, the dam's about to break. Yeah. Oh shit, oh, the yeah. levee's gonna break. Well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Bucktooth beavers slapping, slapping fucking logs. <laughs> Uh, we did uh, skip over skip, a scene with yeah. Alice and Silas, which is just kind of coitus. It's a little bit of information dump stuff. So she was not lying about piloting a steamboat. That wasn't a throwaway joke, or was that? I, I, I interpret it as she's a Pinkerton type. She does stuff where she's like basically fucking with people. Right. And so she, or maybe she's just like a gun, hired gun. Kind mm-hmm. of. She may be skilled at being piloting a steamboat. Yeah, I kind of, um, I, I think I believed the piloting a steamboat thing. Um, I mean, I, I did have some suspicions after she was saying, why does Swearingen hate the Pinkertons? <laughs> and then yeah. Silas fucking beats me, stalwart organization. Like that, that. That, was, that was a great, <laughs> that was then, a great joke. And then he says, did you send, help send the miners up the fucking scaffold in Pennsylvania? What is that referring to? It's referring mean? to strikes. Uh, oh. Basically, the mining conditions in oh. camps like this and, and at Hearst mm. Comstock, you know, they mentioned 40 people dying in the previous episode, like, they didn't treat workers very well in the eighteen mm-hmm. hundreds, and they're and they you know striking was the only way to try to get you know like you know maybe a not a seven day work week or yeah. you know mm-hmm. and a lot of times the strike breakers would be the Pinkertons and they mm-hmm. would hurt people and and what's so neat about Deadwood is it's one of the few shows that would be like sympathetic with the idea of workers' rights that's not always explicit in American shows where it'd yeah. be like oh yeah you you know this is a something that's special to like not be worked to death. Um, mm. And anyway, this show associates the just Pinkertons. stabbed to death, yeah, and throat slit to death, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so Walcott makes it to the Shea Ami, yep, and gets uh, what's her name? Oh uh, well, he he talks to Maddie. It's a uh, that is size Do- inside Doris is Doris. who he he. I mean, like he walks right through the door. Uh, and, Maddie's and like and he wants uh, Carrie's napping. Yep, yeah. you know, and he's like, I'm not no matter. At... I want this one. This you know, one over at, here. Touching <laughs> Doris. <laughs> We're we're just taking his his voice like way outside of it, uh, but you know he point, so because that's that's Doris is is size spy. Yeah, he's size very spy. angry at her, and also she like many people murdered violently in the show. She is a woman with blonde hair. Yeah, huh. uh, she. Uh, we're almost there. Well, let's. Oh, we got to go back to Merrick and, and Mrs. Stokes on their on their nice little uh, half date. That's going on where he's showing her about the town. 
here's the Bullock's house, which is Bullock's house. <laughs> they just talk about how, how, how wonderful it is to have a teacher who takes interest in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and their, their date is going well. <laughs> and he says he wants to see how I revere your profession. Like he's really into Mrs. Stokes. Oh, yeah. Um, then we got Al and Mr. Wu. Which is great. I mean, so, right. And, uh, a, a Wu mistakes Al saying juice <laughs> for him saying Jews. And, and then so then he goes outside and points at down at Saul. At, at Saul. You you know without them showing it. And has yeah. this come up before, like uh, the Guaylo or Guay? Like, I, I think right. so. I think we've heard Bok Guaylo, which is also a slur for white people in Chinese. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it means like ghost man. Oh wow. So you know, huh. hail, like ghost. That's, huh. that's 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 yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah. Wu, Wu and Swai Jin. Hang Dai. Which apparently Hang means Dai. brother or something. But like, oh, uh, they're like. But I do, I do want to take one second just to again comment on uh, the uh, parentheticals in the oh script. Oh God! Uh, crosses fingers. Hyphen. Oh we're tight, brah. Okay, that is. <laughs> well, I think we can now safely say this is not written by David Gold. <laughs> this is not written. By I don't think we're tight, brah would be in popular usage in 2004. Uh, look, by the HBO writers who wrote this <laughs> printout we have. I want to say we're very grateful for whoever did yes. Oh, right. I'm totally grateful right. of it. I, yes. ju I just think some of this like some side stuff is so ridiculous. It's very colorful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but still, these... thank you for typing it up. Of course. <laughs> so much anonymous uh, typer up of the script. So, uh, <laughs> Joni. Joni yeah. comes in. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, to the Shayami. Oh, God. And, and yeah. uh, Maddie is uh, not... A fan of her being here. <laughs> also not a fan of what's going on inside the other room. No, but, like, but is ready for it to be over. And Maddie's almost like orgasmic with the prospect of getting her retirement money. Right. She's mm -hmm. like holding a newspaper but not looking at it, and she's kind of half smiling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Joni's like starting to freak out, and uh, Walcott just comes back in the room with like one arm behind his back, and he's like, ah, can I see another prostitute? <laughs> I see and, my prostitute. And, uh, and Joni, uh, before he comes out, though, correctly says... That uh, why he would want to see uh, what's her name, uh, Doris. Doris. Yeah, but because she reports to Cy Tolliver. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like I, I, this is pretty transparent. Yeah. And then that's when he comes out and asks for Carrie, and then I mean, we go back to Cy. It's hard to. I, I feel like I already know the answer to this question, but why does he request Carrie after already having dealt with Doris? Is it just because he's a psycho? Well, he explains when he when he kills her. He says because she's he does not want to have been seen. Yes. we're jumping ahead, but yes, but, but he hasn't been seen. Well, except well by, in the last episode, but not be seen. He took oh, off his trousers about about him. his oh his God. stuff. He's, he took off his trousers for Carrie because he's literally that he's that much of a psycho. Of a, yeah. And, and yeah, so, okay. in some ways, that letter from Wild Bill that he—I uh, was gesturing to my penis for those <laughs> who were just listening to the podcast. <laughs> that letter from Wild Bill that uh, Farnham sold him mm -hmm. was like a poison pill, at least for Carrie, because huh. like if she had not read that and it had not moved them so much that yeah, he was he ready, would, ready to get naked, right? He God would not. Damn it, Farnham! Yeah, <laughs> Farnham fucks everything up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so now we're back with Cy, Khan, and Leon, the fucking mm -hmm. dynamic duo. <laughs> fucking <laughs> losers. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the parentheticals in our typed-up script say, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Cy just starts... He, he's starting to talk to them like he usually does, where he's like kind of setting up some sort of plan, and then he gets to a certain point where he says... Referee's the only neutral in a prize fight, Merrick, and you ain't one of those because he's trying to get them to go mess up Merrick's place. Yeah, he's and not. Then, he doesn't believe in the press as an objective. Right, and then, source. and then they're like, "We could say that, but what the fuck does it mean?" <laughs> it was like, and then, but then he and he says, right? He's like, doesn't he say like, "I don't know either." Yeah. Well, no, he, he, no, he says, Sai says, "I don't know. I don't know, fellas." Like he doesn't know that he can continue working with them because they're so dumb. Like <laughs> it's 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 like I don't know, but but then, but they take it as he's saying I don't know. They're like, yeah, well, yeah. I, if you don't know, we don't have to either. <laughs> and he's like, your initiative and leadership abilities and stick fucking to itiveness are all in fucking question. 
And, uh, you know, <laughs> Sai is always is, is funny, yeah. but it's always just a little too dark. Yes. Uh, like, um, Jesus Christ. It's almost like, uh, you know, I don't know, who will rid me of this troublesome priest? Yeah. But, like, he still has to spell it out. Yeah. yeah. Like, so he wants them to go mess up Mayor Express. Yeah, right. He wants them to fuck. Because fuck he wouldn't print the, the uh, Yankton commissioners. Mm -hmm. Right. Thing. Okay, basically, okay, whatever. We're, we're in there with Walcott and Carrie now. Yeah. And <clears throat> Doris is dead on mm -hmm. the bed. She's, her throat's been slit. We mm -hmm. notice that Walcott has a straight razor in his hand, and Carrie is standing in front of him, which is the worst possible place to be with yeah. somebody with a straight razor who just slit somebody else's throat. Who has his knife wavering out of focus <laughs> in, the right. in the background. And eventually he just puts his, his arm on her glinting. shoulder. And he's just... Uh, <laughs> and it's a good performance by the actress who played Carrie. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. she, oh, she God. looks. She's just looking down and off screen, but you just see this this slow, f frozen quality. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have been seen. Yeah, then you're fucking crazy, which yeah. he is. And then <sighs> this really depressing line that she says, "Do you know how to make it not hurt?" Yeah. So sad. Yeah. And she tries to make a run for it. Mm -hmm. And he grabs her and cuts her throat. And it's bad. And then he, like, sort of cradles her almost. Yeah. yeah. And it's... Well, how did, you, how did you guys take this scene? Like, how did I take it? He's yeah. a serial killer, man. Yeah. I was like, Jesus. Did you take it as, like... Do you think it, w it was too much for the show? No, I didn't like, think it was too much for no. Walcott, anyway. No, uh, I like, mean, he's, I was like, he's, he's established that he has... Um, um, sociopathic tendencies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he's completely disassociated himself. The only thing he knows is that he can't have somebody who's seen his penis. Yeah. And so he needs to kill everybody involved with it um, so that that can satisfy his, his weird sense of privacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and he just he shows no emotion about any of it happening during any of the three killings that happen within the span of like 30 seconds Right. Um, yeah, he's just kind of, he has an intense look on his face, but he isn't, like, his pulse isn't a higher rate. No, not at all. That very cold. Right. Very cold. Very, uh, un, very unlike Dan or sure. any of the other, or even, like, when Al's had to do it a couple no. of times or whatever. They're all, all hot-blooded. Yeah, uh, they're all hot-blooded, but then they also, like, they have feelings. Right. When things happen, at least Dan mm -hmm. cries a lot. Dan, yeah, Dan cries all the time. Does. But I mean, Al does we, what he did the preacher in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and you could see it. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a lot of the other people that have to do this kind of stuff, even the bad guys, aside from like Psy, because he's also another sociopath, which is why him, yeah, and Walcott get along so well, well is because <laughs> they're both you mentioned sociopaths. You mentioned when we start like. How Swearingen would have reacted to three dead bodies versus how Al would have reacted to three dead bodies. Well, like, so you mean uh, how Al versus Al Sai. and Sai. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. So, so okay. well, to, specific. To, to okay, skip it. To yeah. skip ahead. Uh, to that. And okay, and and so we we cover it. So like after Wolcott leaves the room yeah. with Maddie and dead Maddie, dead. No, not sorry. I'm sorry. Dead Carrie. Yep. Dead Doris. Yep. Maddie's out there. Yep. She. But uh, knows what Joni's already left. Joni's left because she knows what is going well, down. Well, because Maddie stupid. has pulled the gun on her. Yeah. She's like, right. you're messing with my like, Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. yeah. So Wolcott leaves the room. Uh, Maddie uh, is out there in the uh, general parlor area. Yeah. And, you know, knows what's up. Yeah. Um, and he says what's happened is very expensive. And something very expensive. Something, something very, very expensive. expensive. She asks what's happened. Is something very expensive, which is the name of the episode. Something very, something expensive. very expensive. Also, another negative point about the, uh, the, the script writers. There's a huge spoiler of all of two of the dead people and Walcott right on the there. front of the script, and so we were very lucky that Chad did not see it when we printed it out. Yeah, I was very purposely not looking at any of the pictures that are printed on all of the things. Yeah. I did see that Bullet cries in one episode. And uh, that's it. Bullet cries, he gets his feelings hurt. Oh no! Um, so uh, no, so uh, so Maddie, you know, after he says it's very expensive, she lays out a price very quickly. I think pulls out that pistol on him at the same time. And like says a hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand plus. Any money I want, any other time for the rest of my life, fucker. And uh, and then she gets too close. And yeah, I, I don't like that staging. Yeah, I mean, that staging is horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's like, horrible. It was like quick, quick day on the set there. Yeah, though, right? Like, right. Yeah, 
Like he needs, she needed to try to fire with a click that didn't yep. work, and he needed to move forward quickly right. a, with a sense of a greater space. Because yeah. as it is, it, she looks like a very stupid character. Or, or either either that, or she shoots. It's a very small caliber anyway, and yeah. if she's not used to shooting a gun, then maybe she could shoot, hit him in the arm or something, right. and then yeah. he and then he closes the gap quickly and kills her and yeah. slices her across the neck. Yeah, and then and that's fine. Kind of yeah. has like maybe the only. The only kind of I don't know how how you describe his face when he sits down after he's just sliced her neck. It's almost like a oh, this is quite a predicament. Yeah, you exactly. Know, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not really emotion. It's like yeah. it's almost what like a, think of what, the cleanup. What will I do now? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, Joni goes to Sai. Joni goes to Sai. Sai is like, don't fucking follow me. I'm gonna yeah. go fucking deal with this, and yeah, then deal with it. And then she gets money. She gets money from the bartender in fourteen hundred. Uh, and then that's when Sai shows up. And we're skipping ahead some things just so we can f- get to this yeah. point. Um, right. Sai shows up with Walcott there, and what happens? See, okay, <sighs> what does happen? Okay, th- but this is this does lead into like what I was saying in terms of like Sai's the difference between Sai and Al with this exact same situation. Not so much with three dead bodies, but like three dead women. I feel like Al is a little bit different from Sai in terms of like he I think does he, actually... I think he would have killed him. That's exactly what I was thinking. I think thinking. he would have shot him in the head. Like, yeah. <laughs> or stabbed him or whatever. Al yeah. is cold. Al is heart... I mean, he's a... a I don't know all the things you could he say about like Al. He doesn't lack empathy, though. Yeah. He doesn't lack empathy. He can push and it also, to the back, but he doesn't lack it. He, I, I feel like also he's at least got. I don't know. I, 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 I hesitate to like say like he has a soft spot for women, but like he kind of does. <laughs> he kind at of least does more than Cy does. Again, like he likes to kidnap them from orphanage and yeah, sell, force uh, them into yeah. prostitution. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta cover the full gamut of who Al Swearingen is. Mm-hmm. Like, but like Which I feel at the like same we have. time, yeah, we, I've, I've reinforced the point. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you come, if 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 you presented Al Swearingen with the same situation, like, I don't see Mr. Walcott coming out of that. Alive, especially I, I don't know. No, he's know. going in there with the fucking pigs. They're they're gonna get probably buried out in the fucking grave. I don't know. I mean, this is a lot of money. If he had the Hearst organization underneath his thumb, he might be like, you know, this guy's better to me alive than dead. Like, if he could make money off of it, I think I would. would I don't it. think so. I I just don't think. I don't know. I feel like Al is a little bit more motivated by like. I don't know. I, I can't say morality. I can't say, like, you know, necessarily uh, passion or anything. Like, I just feel like he couldn't let such a cocksucker live any yeah. longer. Right. Like, I really don't. I feel that way about Al. There is something with most of the people he kills are murderers yeah. who have killed people off screen, and he, in some way, delivers justice to them. Right. Yeah. Like, he, he always murders people who are murderers a lot of the time. But right. at the same time, I, I just. I feel like we'd need to have a religious awakening in Al since his near-death experience <laughs> subplot sure. for him to concretely... Uh, well, he, he delivers justice, maybe, in terms of... He delivers mercy in terms of the preacher, but... Right. I, I don't know. Well, I, I'd be sure. curious to see him in this scene. I just... Yeah, I just... I don't even think, like, post... You need post-illness Al. I feel like pre... Gleet Al still would have had come to the same conclusion if, like... Here is this, you know, persnickety, upper class dude who just slit the throats of three women for what? Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I think if he liked his, one of the women or the guy was a Pinkerton, yeah, he'd definitely kill him. Sure. I but, mean, I, yeah, I mean, hmm, I guess I don't know. Maybe I'm being what, a little too what blanket. other what other um, mass murderers of like innocent. Women or children or whatever does he let live? What other mass murderers? I mean, what Ow. other what other mass murderer does he come in contact with? I'd well, I mean, that. one of them is the 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 three. They're not brothers, are they? Or the, whatever at the beginning. The Masons and Persimmon Bill. Yeah, Persimmon Phil. Which he ends up killing him. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he does, but he was making money off their operation. He was. And the only problem was that they screwed up his operation. That's, yes. Yeah. Their problem wasn't that they killed people, it's that they, had, they came into town. Well, no, he hired them to, to what? do things, but also they fucked up big time. I mean, really, he was trying to throw them at Wild Bill for them to die. He didn't right. care about their lives. He didn't care about their lives, but I, I definitely say that he was partly benefiting from their operation, which yes. was to kill people and then make it look like Indians killed them and then rob them. Like, right. that was, I don't think he, he didn't really bat an eye about killing that child. Like, I no. don't think that, it's, okay, but it, hmm. One of those girls was size spy. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's one of size girls. Right. In a way. So that, like, I, I, I can't even imagine Al have, like, one of Al's girls being, like, killed by anybody and him not, like, well, regardless of what, I don't know, it, it's, it, I, I feel very weird, like, even trying to, like, really put any kind of valor. I think the or, show is on, seducing on you with, yes. with Al. So no, I mean, it's, I'm, it's I'm leaning more towards Ben's yeah. thing. I'm trying to grasping it, at straws. It to shows find Al as a. As, as increasingly lovable when yes. it doesn't have to. It shows other characters as buffoons and other characters as purely violent or right. uh, sexually violent. Right. And there's two two arguments that I put. One, one is Jimmy Irons and his employee, the dope fiend, who was he drowned in a bathtub of what looked like milk. When, yes, when because really he had he, to. It, yeah. it was a total. It was a business transaction or a, yeah. or a business. It was a far sighted sort of action that he yeah. did. He was like, I'm really own. thinking this, I'm really out thinking Cy Tolliver now, I'm gonna drown my loyal employee, well not my loyal employee, I'm gonna, drown, <laughs> I'm gonna drown this guy who possibly shot a guy to death in this bathtub. Yeah. And then Lee there's also- size guy alive. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you know. There, there's also Cy Tolliver. Cy Tolliver kills Flora and Miles yeah. brutally. Yes. And everybody in Deadwood goes along working with them. So I guess, I guess he, that's- They were kind of, thieves, but- I, But I guess that's kind of like- Al doesn't blink an eye at it. Where, where it, it does make sense to draw this di distinction between them because, like, the child didn't die. It's not like Al was like, oh, we got to go out there and kill that kid. It was, right. like, it was like somehow the kid got away. Mm -hmm. like, we got to go out there. We got to murder that kid. Mm -hmm. We literally see Cy shoot yeah. a kid in the head and then force Joni to shoot the other one in the head. Yeah, for no real reason. No real reason other than they, they slighted him. Yeah. And so, um, I get what you're saying, though. The show does seduce you to want to side with one or the other. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that. I, I don't know. I feel like I, we need David Milch here right <laughs> yeah, now right to here. just settle it. Like, yeah. if, if it were if we could out in that room. his head right through the table here. Yeah. With Walcott, seeing the three, three dead women with their throats slit, like, mm -hmm. and would Al have been like, well, let's try to make this work. Or would Al have been like, you yeah. know, just no? Well, I take your point. I think it. I think it's a good point. I, I just. I don't. It's know. It's an interesting discussion. I, yeah, I don't know that what, what what Al would do. I guess nobody really does. He he does surprise. Okay, Al is meeting with Mr. Gold. Lee, yep. and Mr. Wu right. is hiding in the behind behind the blinds. Yep, behind the uh, French doors. Or and whatever. Uh, uh, Dan keeps pulling out more gold to try to. Seduce Mr. Lee into giving up his, and then this, and then we also see that Mr. Lee speaks very good English. Yes, yes. yes. And it's like, and again, he was hiding this from people. And it's smart of him to hide this from people, yeah. um, which is also striking because then Mr. Wu comes out and says, "Juice." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. And here it was. I, I really like. The character of Lee, who uh, I won't say any more about him, but I just I really love how badass he is. Yeah, it, and you can kind of tell that here. Doesn't blink it like twenty how much? grand. Twenty grand, yeah. like that's crazy. And he's played by the same actor that was in the Big Lebowski at the very beginning, who pees Who's on Wu? the rug. Yeah, oh. it's Wu. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like there's such a contrast between that dopey character him. and this very like again Sergio Leone, all black. I think he has two guns on each mm -hmm. hip, and he just saunters around. Well, come on, Wu. Al's tired. And then we've got uh, Hearst, what about him? San Francisco, you think Hearst, and uh, I'm not going to say that, connected. 
I think he was born looking down his nose. Yeah, 20, and, and just like that, the show seduces you with Al Swearinger. It also seduces you with like incredibly uh, like it's full of like epithets and yes. slurs mm -hmm. that are not polite conversation. No, not and, at all. So let's move on <laughs> to Seth and Saul. And uh, Seth, Seth's apologizing. Seth apologizes for, I mean, he calls her a fucking whore all right. the time, so I don't even know why he's apologizing, because every time he even gets the littlest, the tiniest bit mad, he calls her, he says, the whore. Right. So uh, it's like multiple episodes now where he calls her the whore. And we, we learn also that Trixie will only refer to him as the other. Which is great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of side with her on that. It's like Seth, uh, yeah, he's just like a fucking asshole so much, so much of the show that... Yeah. It's like he does endanger Saul a lot just yeah. by his hot headedness. And so, yeah, but he just does. It's just kind of like he doesn't know himself in his anger. Yeah. Well, get over it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have the end of Merrick and Mrs. Stokes date, which is uh, oh, and so badly. Someone wow. has destroyed his printing press, you know, and it uh, just cracked it. She uh, she brings like a handkerchief to her nose, and I thought it was almost like, oh my goodness. But then later, it's like, oh, there's yeah. literal shit in yes. here. Yes, someone's taking someone a just shit. Someone took a shit. Similar how Sai is like revolted at the smell of the decay right. in the room of the corpses. Yes. And and in that, uh, we'll go. We'll get back to this uh, Steve thing here. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> um, when when Sai comes by, and. Uh, Eric is like, oh my god, my, my press has been destroyed and all this stuff. And uh, Sai, for some reason, wants to let him know, basically, yeah, that he did much. it. He, and he doesn't make it subtle. No, it's like, pretty quickly, Merrick is like, what? You did this? And it's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, and I don't think they had a dog with him. Is that the like, vandalism's purpose, sir? Of the dog defecating in my office with ruffians <laughs> dispatched by you as the lesson's author? Yeah, that's human shit. That's, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> one a dog. That's human shit. And, okay, so let's get back to Steve and Steve. Hostetler. Okay, yeah. so let's, delivery, let's, let's, really, let's, let's really go through this just so, point by point, okay. moment by moment here. The JFK assassination. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion of Steve uh, Hoss, possibly Hoss fucking a horse. Aw uh, shit! Stay still, god damn it! While I come on your fucking leg, you're lucky I'm not fucking you. See? Oh, he sighs. You tell the sheriff how that fucking felt. Oh, me coming on your leg, or that I saved you from an ass see? fucking. See, see, we're okay, all clear okay, now. okay. I think all that's clear. pretty I definite was, of proof. I was, I was too excited <laughs> of the fact that he did fuck that horse, and then he couldn't do it. So then he had to come on the horse's leg, yeah. and that he was going to deserve getting hit in the head with a shovel. Yeah. Didn't hear, didn't have the wherewithal to, yeah. you and know, he just, he just come on the horse's it, leg. This is, you know, Steve the drunk attacking Bullock's horse for hitting him in the bar. Yeah. And, you know, this is also something that is in, like, Lonesome Dove, and, like, which is Larry McMurtry what? novel, where yeah. Cal, you know, and we also had it referred with... Uh, Tom Mason, Nick Offerman's character, where he goes sweet on a heifer, which yeah. seemed to be like a joke, but apparently for Milch, it is like really, sometimes cowboys would get lonely and they would uh -huh. fuck livestock. Uh -huh. And uh, I assume this is a reference to That's that. That's a thing. Yeah. yeah. And there's a really long scene with uh, Fields, Hostetter, and Steve here. Yeah, and it's very funny. It is, it's pretty great. Hostetler, you know, just kind of like walks up, barely even sneaking up on, on Steve. Yeah. masturbating off on this horse. And he's so scandalized, he just says, you need to die, Steve. I, that's, that is such a great line. And it's like, he was in here fucking a horse. I did not fuck that horse. It's like, you need to die, Steve. And he explains he's going to hit him with a shoeing tool, shoeing tool in the middle of the forehead and drop him like a piece of beef. <laughs> he's going to bolt him in the forehead like a, a cow. I do, but I did not fuck that horse. What is all this... What? What is parent that was talking about Eric Clapton? Uh, where is that? Oh, God. I fucked the, the fuck? sheriff, but did, I did not fuck the horse. That's uh, a reference to a Eric Clapton song. That which is great, but also sure. not accurate. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> unnecessary and then, side shit. It's you know, all right, fellas. The, 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 um, the general, basically, he... Uh, he tries. He realizes that he needs to call him. He brokers uh, the peace. Hosteller down, and it's yeah. kind of an act of mercy towards the guy who just tried to kill him. Yeah, yeah. and, and he, so they try to make him sign this statement saying that he fucked Bullock's horse, even though he's like, 
Just to be clear, I did not fuck that. He's like, that's great, but you're going to sign a statement saying that you did. I yeah. fuck Bullock Horse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on a chalkboard. Yes, yeah. on, a on a chalkboard. chalkboard they can know. easily be erased. Yeah. Uh, but I get, that's all they have. Um, yeah. And then he says, would you sign off on that slight exaggeration to keep from getting your fucking head smashed in? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he also it, adds in these great... He's like, would you bless colored folk and God mm-hmm. that's father to, to us, us all? all. Like, he, I would and go hence in gratitude. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a good, uh, you know, it's a good um, conclusion to, you yeah. know, the events of the last episode. Well, it it's shows like, that, um, that the general is like a really good guy. Right. And yeah. like he, that he's able to forgive Steve. Because <sighs> who would have known if... Both of them, Hosteller and uh, Fields, had just been like, "Yeah, yeah, let's let's nail this dude right yeah, in the head yeah. and you know bury dump him, him somewhere and he's, he's bury dead. him right no, here in no, the barn." They have enough money to pay Wu. They're yeah, rich. Right? Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, who gives a fuck about Steve the goddamn right. drunk? Yeah, but yes, but Fields does seem to be a, a good dude. But there, there, we often have like references to like the racial sense of murder in the camp. Like you can't mm. like different races that are cannot kill whites because right. you know, whites are like a protected race here, and so like there, people are always afraid like Mr. Wu is going to kill a white, and right. therefore then the, the the Chinese people in the camp will be massacred. And I, I assume that they would have a similar yeah uh, mm-hmm. fear. Um, and then we get into the fact that Hostetler apparently has a drinking problem, and he's well, he didn't in seventeen years. Or he well, did. that's still he, that's he had yeah that's yeah, still yeah, you yeah. still have a drinking problem even if you're seventeen years true. sober you have a drinking right. problem. Yeah. And so uh, he says, "Yeah, well, you're over that now." And then he pretty much says, "Like, <laughs> no, that's not how it works, motherfucker." And uh, and yeah, and then he, and then he reiterates the same thing that we've already heard that he's like. I would have done the same thing. I would have sold my ass down the river just quicker, right. quicker than you did. So yeah. We're good. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, uh, oh God, Martha. Martha. And Seth. <laughs> was it a difficult day? Was it a she difficult says day? To him. No, he and, says. and hits and again, just he, Bullock's carrying all this tension in his face, like he mm-hmm. always does. And he's just like and just seething mm-hmm. over there while he's eating his whatever the fuck they're eating, yeah. and. Uh, Martha just doesn't know what to make of him still. Yeah. I wouldn't either. He, well, seems, he seems like a psychopath. No, like if, if you just keep seeing him in these little off moments like right. this, it's like he seems like a psycho. Like what has his day been? She has no idea. Nope. No. Yeah. <laughs> they're like three different people who are like separated by like hundreds of thousands of miles. Right. And yet they're at the same little kitchen table. <laughs> um, okay. <sighs> We're back at Al's bedroom. You, you know, they're sort of just kind of almost uh, decompressing oh, the day. This you is know? this is when Al wants to go out to the uh, to the balcony, the balcony out in the air, and he's and he's like, you know, they help him up, and then they're like, or he says something about like, I don't want people to think that we're triplets. <laughs> they yeah. coming out there. Uh, oh, he talks about crop ear. I forgot all about that. Yeah, he, he basically says, oh, you know, how's crop ear doing? <laughs> 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 it's a really nice joke where. Dan oh, says, yeah, that's who he was talking about. Okay. Yeah. About the person you used to maraud with yeah, back, back in the... In the I, I was so yeah. focused on the forest thing and being yeah. like, oh, that's like the thing he was talking about before because yeah. we just learned this last episode. He's looking whatever. for muscle to fight against yeah. horse and he's like, crop yeah. might be a good candidate. And I, I just totally missed the crop ear part. And yeah. so, yeah. He okay, was, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was a bed <laughs> when crop ear was dispatched by, uh, by Dan. Lots of throats being slit in the last few episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And he, he can barely move his arm, and he has to, like, shove it in his pocket. Yeah, right, right. Um, uh, let's not appear as fucking triplets, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then we get to Joni. And so Joni... She's, she's smuggling out, I guess, the rest of the girls of the Shea Ami. Right. This, so this is... This is the end of the Shea Ami. Uh, this is like, <laughs> what, what is Joni going to do? Uh, I guess she has to go back to Sai. I guess. Or yeah. I, She's kind of on the hook now. She looks at... Wow, there's that little that 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 was look. interesting. I was like, I don't know. I was like, man, but that would just be like a fucking all out war if yeah. like she went over there. It'd also be Psy like, would he wouldn't care. He would like fucking soldier up. <laughs> It'd also <laughs> be like several rungs down for Joni, yeah. like in a way. But maybe she know. could class up the joint. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, she, so she she smuggles out the rest of the girls from the Shea Ami with the help with the to, help of Charlie Utterfreight to, yeah. to take it uh, suddenly. And as you mentioned, Ben, uh, like there's a little bit of uh, 
a parallel with the Chinese uh, girls being brought in kind of under yeah. a tarp. Yeah, you know, and, and then she, and, and then Jody's trying to give him the money, and then some, it's like, stick someone, your arm out. Someone stick your arm out, and then like three arms go out, and she, then she hands she the, money. the money. Who got it? Yeah. And you, know, they, you hear they from they the tarp or whatever. And, and, yeah. and they're in a much better place than the other prostitutes because yeah. yes, at least they have fourteen hundred dollars and are free. Right, and but because they're white. Yeah, they have a certain amount of like yeah privilege here. Yeah, yeah. even though they're like, you know, sex slaves. Basically, anyway, they're they're, they're fucked. They're, to- they're yeah. totally fucked, yeah. but at least they can get the hell out of this nightmare. Well, they're yeah. not like, I mean, the, the the women brought in in the cage were literally like captured. I mean, they yeah. were like pleading. It's like, oh my God, what the, what is And again, all, all the residents of Deadwood turned a blind eye. Yeah, it's like, huh? Didn't, just to not, doc it, was like, even the doc who was the one who gave the strongest fight. reaction yeah. to it was, yeah, it was just like, like, he bent his head down, down. Yeah. go away, yeah. Walk, walked on. Well, I mean, to be, what are you gonna do? Like it was yeah. two two there's, gangsters. There's, what are you gonna do? Ber- it's, you know, standing, there were gangsters everywhere. You're not you're not gonna do anything. You're gonna yeah. fucking walk away. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it's just it it seems like hyperbole. It's so you know it's like these are literal sex slaves. You know someone would come out and stop them. But yeah. I, I assume that especially because of the relationship between Chinese people and white people, yeah, they, they would just they would be second class citizens and it wouldn't right. matter. And, and even if somebody like Bullet came out and was like, "What the fuck's going on here? No, we're not gonna do this." I bet. You could sigh, you could get a bunch of racist uh, people riled up again, get another mob going, and then it'd be like, kill Bullock. It's yeah. like he's, he's siding with fucking Chinese people. Yeah. Right. And that'd be the end of it. So, yeah. No. Racist. Well, this, it's uh, yeah. the Deadwood qu- story. Quite a, yeah, quite an episode, this episode. Yeah. Uh, really quickly, did you. Something very expensive. Yeah, something very expensive. Did you, you didn't think it was too much? In terms of the violence. Oh, the serial killing? Yeah. No, the serial it, killing. It, it made they, perfect sense with what, if what we know about with what Walcott, Walcott is. Like, yeah. uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm yeah, it, it made perfect sense. I mean, it's kind of like a thing with serial killers, too, is they always have weird sexual hang-ups. Well, I mean, uh, Maddie described from when she was in the hotel buffet with mm-hmm. uh, Joni, mm-hmm. she described Walt, Mr. W, you know, is a specialist, right? Which you know we've only heard that term used with like for the tit liquor, the tit liquor, you yeah. know. And there's a thing about specialists, you know. They and, always and pay a premium, and they never cause trouble. Never cause they trouble, never but trouble. like you know, this is a particular kind of spe- she kind of she knew exactly what his whole kink was. Unfortunately, which was violence. He's a violent specialist. Yeah, that's unfortunately. The thing. So it's like. It's like you don't, it, it, I don't know, like he might not cause trouble in other arenas, but like he definitely causes trouble for the ladies. Uh, I don't even know where, what else to say. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, I, it didn't surprise me. I mean, it's horrifying. Walcott, but... Walcott uh, terrified me from the beginning. Yeah, I, I really love the build from his conversation with Cy Tolliver into his speech about being past surprise mm-hmm. to the murder. Mm-hmm. And the only, the only fly in the ointment for me is Maddie's death where she stands too close to Tolliver. That's sure. like it's, bad it's, soap opera stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, really, really yeah. silly. But, um, yeah, I, I, I love this sequence of episodes we just finished. They're really great. And uh, another fade to black. Yeah. Another fade to black. Yeah, like last but one. it wasn't as silly as the last one because the last one I feel like was really short. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was all of a sudden it went, hmm. it went away, and this one was a gradual fade and out. You had of lights Owl. in the background. Yeah, yes. Yes. Of, about this nice looking shot of mm-hmm. Owl with the, yeah the lights in the background and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it went two beavers slapping logs. You can't keep the gold from me. 